We start our roundup of day 12 in Montpellier, where Paris Saint-Germain faced an uphill battle on Sunday night when Mamadou Saka was shown a straight red card only 10 minutes into the game. Saka was adjudged by referee Clément Tarpin to have pulled down Gaëtan Chabonnier after a poor pass from Marco Verratti. The replay is suggesting that red was a harsh decision, but Monsieur Turpin brandishing the card nonetheless. Still, even a man down, PSG managed to take the lead when Jeremy Menez and Ezekiel Levetsi launched a counter-attack. Menez darted across the edge of the Montpellier area before squaring for Maxwell, who chipped delightfully over Geoffrey Jordan to make it 1-0. Montpellier then pulled a goal back on the hour mark through Remy Cabello. But four minutes later they were reduced to ten men themselves when Eunice Belhander was shown a second yellow card for deliberate handball. Won all the final score with the referee set to make the headlines. He's young, and as I already said to you two weeks ago during a press conference, he's a good referee, but sometimes I think he is too keen to play a starring role when he's on the pitch. Lorient's current downward spiral continues as they suffered a 4 0 home defeat to Bordeaux on Sunday. Henri Seve headed this goal home in the 53rd minute, and it was a case of preparing the victory dance, with Bordeaux already 3 0 up. They completed the route five minutes later when Seve lofted forward to Justier, who squared for Johan Gouffron. Coach Francis Gillot is happy to see Bordeaux quietly working their way up the table. They're now only two points off the top spot. We hear a lot about certain teams doing well, and we've now got the same number of points as they do. So carry on talking about those other teams, we'll just get on with the job like we did last season. Leon missed an opportunity to go top of the league in spite of taking the lead away to Socho when Maxime Gondelon headed home Steve Malbronx free kick. But Socho got the point they deserved after Sloan Priva played an excellent one two with Ria Budabuz, shrugged off Milan Bishavak, and fired past Remy Vakutra. One all, the final score. There was similar disappointment for Marseille, who also got off to a good start when they hosted Nice at the Velodrome. Mathieu Valbuena crossing in for the offside Andre Ayou to make it 1 0. Nice equalised when Dario Kvitinic got on the end of Eric Botiak's free kick, the Marseille defence abandoning Steve Mandanda. Then the hosts restored their lead in the second half through Valbuena. Andre Ayou's initial effort was clawed away by David Ospina, but Valbuena's follow up clearly crossed the line. 2 1 Marseille. Nice rescued the draw in the 88th minute. The offside Alexi Bassetti pulled back for Camel Merriam and Fabrice Abriel was on hand to thrash home his missed hit attempt. 2 2 then, enough to satisfy Nice coach Claude Puel. I would say that a draw is a fair result looking at the game as a whole. Marseille dominated the first half and we dominated the second. It's a shame that we conceded a goal that should have been disallowed and had one disallowed that should have been given. But that's football. The main thing today is that we came away with the points. Happier days for Saint Etienne, who built on their excellent win away to PSG last week with a home victory against Troyes. Renault Coad opened the scoring just after half time with this impressive half volley. And Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang brought his total for the season to eight goals when he stabbed home two minutes from time. Some sloppy defending helping Lever to a 2-0 win, which sees them climb to fourth. Delight then for the Joffre Guichard faithful. Lille needed a result against Brest on Saturday to help them recover from their 6-1 thrashing at the hands of Bayern Munich in midweek. They got off to a good start with an early chance for Dimitri Payet, and when former Chelsea man Solomon Kalou was put through on goal, Bernard Mondi came close to scoring a spectacular own goal. Breastkeeper Alexi Thibault clearing the danger. Kalou claimed the game's only goal on the stroke of half time, and Rudy Garcia afterwards made a point of thanking the club's supporters. I also want to congratulate our supporters, who are behind us 100% today, even during the warm-up, and that's a strong message for them to send. I really want to say a big thank you to them for all their support. I know they appreciated our good first half performance, and I think they also appreciated the last 20, 25 minutes when we had to dig a bit deeper. Indeed, after an anonymous opening period, Brest did create a few chances in the second half. 
but Mikel Landro remained alert, especially after this effort from Larsen Tora. 1-0, the final score. Toulouse got off to a perfect start at home to Ajaxio when the visitors took the trouble to open the scoring on their behalf after only four minutes. Anthony Lupini heading into his own net. But the hosts were later guilty of some defensive negligence of their own as Pavlininkov was dispossessed by Sigmar Diara and Chaya Belgazwani got away from Ali Ahamada and scooped home to put Ajaxio 2-1 up. Toulouse fought back to 3-2 but Ajaxio had the final say as Diara launched a counter-attack and fouled Belgazwani inside his own half. With Ahamada out of position, Belgazani swept home from distance for his second of the game. 4-2 the final score in Toulouse. When Ligon's best attack came up against its worst defence, there were bound to be plenty of goals, and so it proved as Valenciennes took the lead away to Bastia through Fouad Kadir. Anthony Modeste equalised from the penalty spot, before substitute Julian Palmieri put the Corsicans in front. Kadir claimed his second of the game with this gem for two all before setting up Mathieu Dosevi for the winner. 3 2 to Valenciennes at full time with a disappointed Frederic Hans speaking after the game. I don't want to take anything away from Valenciennes, a very talented side, but I feel like we lost this game ourselves. We lost because it was our third match in six days, which was very obvious towards the end of the game. We also lost because we didn't know how to hold on to our lead, which I think is understandable in the sense that certain players lack experience at this level. Ren took the lead away to Nancy on Friday night when Mevla Turding headed in from this Chris Mavinga cross. After Nancy equalised, Roman Alessandrini put Ren back in front with a possible contender for goal of the season. A stunning volley from just inside the area. Nancy missed a penalty 10 minutes from time and were punished for it when Jonathan Petwapa got in behind their defence and simply had to nod into an empty net for his fourth goal of the season. 3-1, the final score. All the results from this 12th day then with an important win for Evian away to Reims on Saturday night. Marseille, Lyon and PSG were all held to a draw on Sunday, meaning it was a good day for the rest of the pack. Rennes, Lille, Valenciennes, Saint-Étienne and Bordeaux all making up ground on the leaders. The table sees PSG remain top on goal difference, though Marseille and Lyon both have a game in hand. They face each other on Wednesday, November the 28th. Meanwhile, only four points now separate the top nine teams. At the other end of the table, Nancy are now six points adrift of safety, while Evian's win over Rance means they draw level on points with Socho. Ajaxio, the only other team in the bottom half to win today, jumped to 12. A look ahead to next week when out of form Lorient face the daunting task of hosting in form Lille on Friday night. PSG hosts Rennes in Saturday's early kickoff, then on Sunday, Lyon take on Reims, Toulouse travel to Nice, and Bordeaux and Marseille round up proceedings in the late kickoff.